What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. We know of course now that Nintendo shut down servers for the 3DS and Wii U, whether it's the storefronts or being able to play online, but there is another aspect to this that's sort of been unfolding over the last few days as people online started to realize that they were unable to download previously purchased DLC for a certain title on the 3DS. Of course, bring up questions again around that all digital future, which we'll go over that here today. Also, we are be talking about a situation that exploded yesterday around a rumor that circulated for EA Motive and what they're onto after Dead Space. And then we did get a full list of the PlayStation Plus extra and premium tiers for April, and we'll take a look at that as well. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button, helps it a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members for the channel do get News Wave early and ad free. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with Ubisoft and a new Prince of Persia game, which was technically leaked out a bit early, but now we have a full trailer and the official reveal, which you can see some of that trailer here. And this is for the Rogue Prince of Persia. This is being done with the Dead Cells developers, Evil Empire. It's coming out in early access on Steam, May 14th at this time. That's the only platform that it's been announced for. Nothing when it comes to consoles or anything there. And well, in the trailer, it's it's a definitely a very unique art style and direction, but I guess technically since we did get a 2D Prince of Persia game recently, they'd have to go pretty far out there for some of the, the art style. But I mean, it's, it's Evil Empire. They did an awesome job with Dead Cells. So I feel like the gameplay is gonna be very, very good. And it does look like there will be time manipulation here, which is something you really didn't do much in Lost Crown. And the idea of rewinding time makes a lot of sense for what a, a roguelike game. So I, I'm interested in this the early access thing. I'm like, ah, well, we'll see how it turns out. But the idea is they're going to be working alongside of the community to try to just make a better game overall with their feedback. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. But if you're interested, it is dropping on Steam May 14th. Also, of course, we've been discussing Nintendo's next generation device and what they'll shoot for when it comes to specifications with their hardware. Well, one person decided to take matters in their own hands and upgrade the RAM in the current Switch, well, specifically the Switch OLED, and they have an entire video showcasing some of the benchmarks, which did include the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom being internally rendered at 4K. And I mean, the results, you can see for yourself, not great frame rate at like 12 or 13 frames per second. I don't believe it's outputting a, a 4K image, say, to the TV or anything. I think this is just internal resolution that, it, that it's covering. But still, I mean, it shows even if you have a massive overclock on the Switch and twice the memory at eight gigabytes of RAM, still not necessarily up to the task for 4K, which we assume that Nintendo, while they will be using a more capable chip, will also be leveraging things like upscaling, of, of course. And, you know, I took a look at how they got it to eight, eight gigabytes and I'm thinking about it. I, I have a lot of experience actually doing chip replacement and reballing on motherboards with significantly more delicate and larger chips than those memory modules. So maybe we'll try it. The only thing that's kind of tripped me up is the idea of not hacking the switch, but making sure you have the correct system files loaded up uh, before you do all of that, because then you'd end up with like a bricked system essentially. But I'll look into it and maybe it's a video for the future. Oh, and for any of you out there who do have EA Play, the subscription service, it is going up in price next month, which we can see over on gamesindustry.biz. They say the change will come into effect on May 10th, the annual fee rising to $40, while the Pro is up to $120. So going from 30 to 40, and for the Pro from 100 to 120. Not really surprising necessarily, as I, I feel like Almost every subscription service has gone up in price in some amount over the last year and a half, kind of like, obviously it was a whole thing with PlayStation and how much they jumped their prices. But just in general, all these streaming services that I have right now emailed me and was like, oh yeah, it's going up 10%, 20%, something. And I feel like this year, we're going to get that again with other streaming services. Might be the ones that already went up in price two years ago. So... That's just kind of the, the world we're in right now where we thought we were getting away from the cable packages and now we just have 
more streaming services than we know what to do with and that end up costing us more money than those cable packages back in the day. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo and a current situation that's unfolding around the 3DS and downloadable content for Super Smash Brothers. Now, this is posted up over on Reddit and there are a ton of comments that have come in since then. In fact, many people were messaging me about this particular post, which you can see. This is from TJ actually over there saying, previously purchased Smash Bros 3DS DLC is no longer re-downloadable. There's even a, a video that they have here for, for evidence showing that, but they say access to games DLC is managed on a per game basis. So if you delete DLC, you have to go back through the game itself to re-download DLC. You can't do it in the eShop itself as they had tested it here with Mighty Gunvolt's DLC to verify this. They want to say Smash does this a little differently. It makes you connect to its online servers before you connect to the eShop. And because Nintendo just uh, shut down online services for the 3DS and Wii U tonight, you can't connect to Smash Online, effectively meaning that all the DLC you previously purchased is no longer available. Now they are pointing out this is only for the 3DS version as they can't speak for the Wii U version, but still to me, that's, that's irrelevant. It's the, the 3DS version, they were collecting money for that DLC as well. And they did quite a bit to clarify here exactly the, the situation where things like Moss Hunter were also affected. However, Capcom did warn about access to downloadable content maybe not being upheld. And to me at this time, you'd have to call Nintendo support to just at least try to get things moving there. They also said they, they called support and the customer service agent, while very polite, was unable to do anything. Like we'll pass this along up the up the chain, right, of management. And I guess if they get enough calls about this, if you are indeed affected. I mean, if you're not, well, there you go. But if you are, I mean, yeah, you might want to let Nintendo know so maybe they can figure out something here when it comes to a fix because it does seem like you just bypass that connection check and then you'd be able to get to the downloadable content. But this is the concern, again, that a lot of people have around reliance for the internet on, we just talked about Star Wars Outlaws, great example, where there's a potential for having to download additional content just to make sure the game itself works because maybe the install is We'll say 150 gigabytes. Well, they don't want to ship it on two Blu-rays. We'll make you download half the game and that's that. Well, who knows what happens if, I don't know, 15 years down the line, they're not holding the servers up and maybe there's an error like this and they don't feel like going back and fixing it. Well, the game itself, that's just kind of it. Unless I guess you have the digital version, then you got to hope that that's even upheld. So there's just a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the digital future because we really haven't been in it that long anyway. I mean, really, the the shops became able for these different consoles to download and purchase entire games back in like 2009, 2010. It's been 14 years, really. So actually less than that even since that was like fully enabled. And even then it was sort of spotty. So that's, that's kind of the issue I have is we just don't know how things are going to be 10 years from now, unless you have the full thing on a disc or on a cartridge. And it's kind of a shame Nintendo did not release an ultimate 3DS version of Smash Brothers where it was all there. And I know we have it obviously on the Switch, but like where everything that was released downloadable content wise was just there on the cart or on the disc for the Wii U. So here's hoping this is one Nintendo can go back and fix because it does seem like something that maybe they just overlooked. And yes, they could still push a patch technically for, I guess, the game or the system or just something there to have an update to get around the Smash Brothers check and hopefully allow people to download their characters that, you know, they gave Nintendo money for in the first place. Next up, let's talk about a rumor and then a report that exploded online around EA Motive and Dead Space. Specifically, it was a discussion from Jeff Grubb on his podcast around exactly what Motive was up to, which appears to be Iron Man uh, them mostly working heavily on that, but then also supporting Battlefield as the next Battlefield game after 2042 appears to be completely underway as 2042 is getting its last like seasonal update, that sort of thing. That was all detailed by EA, but of course EA Motive did work on Dead Space Remake that, that was an awesome, awesome release. People were wondering, well, does this mean that Dead Space 2 is also getting a remake? Well, doesn't look to be happening. And again, this really blew up to be a big thing online to all end up at the same place really at the end of it. But let's take a look. This is posted up and transcribed by VGC. Of course, this Jeff Grubb over on his podcast saying they're working on Dead Space 2 and they are no longer working on it. 
It is on the shelf because the first game had lackluster sales, is how it was phrased to me. Now we jump over to IGN, where they say EA has denied reports that a Dead Space 2 remake was in development before getting cancelled. That's with a spokesperson telling IGN, we don't normally comment on rumors, but there is no validity to this story. Okay, so then we move over now to Jason Schreier at Bloomberg saying, yes, Dead Space is now on ice once again. EA's motive explored ideas for a new entry early on last year, but none were greenlit. Chief uh, hope was for a new game, not a remake of Dead Space 2. Interesting, despite today's rumors, although both ideas were explored. Jason goes on further to comment on IGN's story and the response they got from EA, saying a rumor today suggests that EA shelved the Dead Space 2 remake, which in the an EA spokesperson denied, saying there was no validity to the story. People familiar with the project tell Bloomberg that EA statement is correct. Motive has been on other projects for nearly a year. Now, this kept going back and forth online over this whole Dead Space thing, because Jeff Grubb said he had like a, a code name was, was already formed for it. Jason Schreier came back and said that code name was just for whatever their next project would end up materializing into. And we know now that they are working on Iron Man and Battlefield. So whatever that would have turned into, it's again, shelved for now. The idea, though, of a new Dead Space, like jumping past two and three, like, so that's my thing right now. Let's say Dead Space Remake did really well in terms of sales. Their plan was to go to a new one and just bypass two and three, which I actually don't mind. And I know people like to, three, not as much, but who knows? Maybe they get in there and remake it and it ends up being a better game. I like the idea of going, oh, wow, there's interest here for Dead Space. Let's go make a new one, like an original title. I That would be really, really cool. Unfortunately, again, I mentioned it all sort of comes to the same place at the end. There is no new Dead Space or Dead Space anything being worked on at this time anyway. Now, of course, they could revisit later on, but let's face it. With what we know with Dead Space, again, great game. What would sell more in your mind, Iron Man or Dead Space? Probably Iron Man. What would probably get more, what would get more engagement and most likely more microtransactions and money with season releases, a new Battlefield or Dead Space? Probably Battlefield. So at this point, EA is looking at these different projects and saying, where is the money? Well, it's with Iron Man and it's with Battlefield. So EA Motive is going to work on those for now. Who knows? Maybe they finish up those projects and they look around and go, okay, well, let's go back to Dead Space. Here's hoping because Dead Space Remake, Awesome title. I, I recommend people absolutely checking it out. It's it's a it's a really fun playthrough. Even if you played the first one or are very familiar with it, it's cool to see it in like a, a new light and that sort of thing. But yeah, unfortunate stuff for Dead Space fans. Seems like it's gonna be a while before we see them maybe come back to it with Iron Man. I think next up, and that being a big focus right now for EA Motive. Next up, let's talk about new PlayStation Plus games for the month of April. These would be games going into uh, extra and premium tier. There are two titles in here that will have different release dates because they are day one releases, but we'll head over here to PlayStation Blog. We can start from the top. The other titles will be going into the service starting April 16th. Now we have one here that is releasing a different date, that being Animal Well. Now this one is coming out May 9th, as it is a day one release for it. So again, not really a game that I necessarily would have even noticed if it wasn't in here, but hey, that's the fun part of having these subscriptions or is supposed to be the fun part is you might find games you didn't notice before and you can try them out right here. Now, moving up to, uh, we have Tales of Kinzara Zao. This one coming out April 23rd, and I am very interested in checking this one out and I will be doing so here on PlayStation Plus. We also have Dave the Diver, that's PS4, and PS5. We have Oddballers, that's PS4. Construction Simulator, PS4, PS5. The Crew 2, very random. That's the PS4 version they'll be dropping in. We have Raji and Ancient Epic, that's PS4 and PS5. Lego Ninjago movie, a video game, PS4. We have Nar Play With Your Food, PS4 and PS5. Deliver Us to Mars, PS4. PS5, Legos, Marvel's Avengers, PS4. We have the, the Miasma Chronicles. This one I've looked at here and there, and I believe this is like a, a strategy RPG, kind of like a turn-based one. I'm, uh, that's one I might take a look at if I get some time. That one's on the PS5. Stray Blade on the PS5. And then moving up to the PlayStation Premium Classics. We already know about two of these, but the one that 
Again, they threw in here we didn't know about. Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare, PS4 and PS5. Star Wars Rebel Assault 2, The Hidden Empire. And then Medieval. These are all original PlayStation titles, so no PSP, no PS2 games thrown in there this month. So really not a bad list of titles here. I think the one I will be checking out or that I'm really looking forward to checking out, Tales of Kanzara Zal. That's probably my my pick out of the out of the list here. But I guess technically if you heard about the crew one and how that was getting taken away recently and you want to check out the series just to get more information on hey, the crew two also in there. But let me know which games from this list going in here in uh, about a week or so you'll be checking out. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new agreement between Microsoft and NetEase that technically repairs the fractured agreement between NetEase and Activision Blizzard. Now we can see this is posted up by Pure Xbox. A little bit of background on this one where they say NetEase and Blizzard previously went through a rough patch when a licensing deal ended between the two parties at the beginning of 2023. It's also support for multiple Blizzard titles and services end in China and was spurred on by a reported rift between NetEase and Activision. After discussions over the past year, players in China will be able to once again access World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, and many other titles across the Blizzard universe, including Overwatch, Diablo, and StarCraft. So, hey, good news there for gamers out in China. But there was one other aspect to this deal that is uh, interesting, I'll say, for future plans that Microsoft has. That's that they now have plans to uh, explore new NetEase games to come to Xbox and other platforms. In the future, well, I mean, if you take a quick look at NetEase's games currently, well, it, it's, yes, it's a lot of mobile stuff. I mean, they also did like uh, uh, Naraka, Blade Point, sure, but yeah, they've been heavily focused in more on the mobile side of things. And we know Microsoft has talked about wanting to get a, a storefront on mobile devices, especially with iOS and the big push right now that's happening uh, between like the DOJ and other regulators around the world pushing back on Apple and trying to open up that ecosystem a bit. But if you look at NetEase, they do have quite a few investments that have popped up in gaming, whether it's with Bungie or them forming Nagoshi Studio. That's actually with the previous producer with Yakuza, where they said, hey, you can have an entire studio, we'll fund the whole thing. And now they're working on some kind of game. So NetEase has been making a bigger push into the gaming space. And this, I guess, agreement or partnership with Microsoft, while yes, bringing a bunch of Activision Blizzard titles to China, We'll also most likely bring a bunch of NetEase games maybe into Game Pass or Microsoft's vision going into their next generation of, I guess, cloud computing, AI, and just Xbox being anywhere so you can play it at any time. I, there's, there's still a lot of questions as to what Microsoft's doing here over the next few years heading into the next generation, but something tells me this partnership with NetEase's focus on mobile, we'll probably play into it. And before we go to the comments of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, have you played Dead Space Remake? Okay, 72% have not. That is a shame, 28%. Yes, no, I do understand. It is a horror game and those games aren't gonna click with everyone. I understand, but still, it's an awesome horror game and you can even look at, okay, it's, it's also an action game, you know, like a third person shooter, but it is a really fun experience. I do recommend more people checking it out. It's also a high quality remake for it not having like a long development cycle. I think they made it in three years or something. And yes, they had source material, obviously to go off of with just Dead Space, but they did a really good job with that remake. And I would like more people to check it out because let's say it sold, 2 million copies. Yeah, I understand why EA is looking around and saying, let's see what other, what other projects EA Motive can work on right now because I don't know if a new Dead Space would sell enough copies to make a bunch of money. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day. And in fact, we're gonna go to them back to back because they're basically making the, the same point for, for the most part. We can see this posted up. This is by Josh who says, Star Wars Outlaws just doesn't look good enough to pay extra for three days. If Elden Ring DLC wanted more money to play early, I'd be all about that. This game hasn't convinced me yet. And then we take a look at the member comment from Loom Doom saying, I don't know about you, but I just could not care about Star Wars Outlaws. I'm burned out on Star Wars and Ubisoft, so putting them together just doesn't do much for me. Yeah, this is, you know, I will admit, I get Ubisoft and these other companies are trying to, I mean, I'll say normalize the idea of this three or three day early access time period and paying more money. I don't know if Star Wars Outlaws is going to pull people that much, unless 
the reviews come out and this thing is like 90s across the board and it's this incredible experience and people are like, oh, okay, well maybe I will check it out if it could be a potential game of the year candidate. I don't know if it's gonna hit that high in terms of review scores. And I don't think it has that pull, even though it has the Star Wars name, to get people on board that early. It does have to be a franchise, like a gaming franchise that has some history or people just really hold in high regard. Now, I'm reminded of, because this has been going on for a long time, but I'm reminded of Forza Horizon 3 specifically on the Xbox One, because Microsoft did this entire thing back then, even with physical copies. There's like the ultimate edition you could buy for $100 versus 60. And instead of it coming out on Friday, you come pick it up, I believe on uh, on Tuesday or something. And you'd be able to walk out with it there in the store like completely. And for Forza, people who are really into Forza, you know, they got like the whole, the wheel set up, they got the seats, they got the shifter knob, pedals, the whole thing. $40 more for the game to get it early and get a head start, especially when it comes to the people in that community who are real competitive about it, that's a drop in the bucket to them. So something like that, sure, I understand how they could yeah, leverage that and make some extra money. But Outlaws, I just, I don't think it's to that point to where people are gonna go crazy trying to get in early. Like Starfield, which was a new intellectual property that actually seemed to work out with that early access stuff. Star Wars Outlaws, I just don't think it's gonna have any kind of pull like that, but I guess we'll see later on this year in August. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was the situation around DLC not being redownloaded on the 3DS, even if you bought it. Do you think Nintendo is gonna fix that? And let me know if you were also affected by that whole thing. And then what about the situation with EA and Dead Space, how it looks like that's been shelved for now. Are you someone who wants to see a brand new Dead Space maybe in the future? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.